As the pandemic continues into its second year, more Americans are struggling with anxiety, depression, and insomnia. The demand for mental health care is higher than ever. And joining us to share strategies to cope and maintain our mental well-being is Kaiser Permanente's Dr. Heidi Meyer. Welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here. Doctor, mental health providers have seen a dramatic surge in patients. They're stretched thin. Many have wait lists. What factors are at play here? You know, we're in the middle of a crazy long pandemic. Uh, it's still going on. We've got major political change. We've got social movements that have started. And in all of this, we're trying to stay informed and we're consuming media in the form of electronics all the time. And it's really 24 seven, it never ends. And it just, it's a stressor that no one can maintain for this long. Now anxiety can affect one's thoughts, feelings, even their body. Are there telltale signs or symptoms that a person has anxiety? There are, and they're often confused for other things. Um, so a lot of the symptoms are actually internalized. So people will come in, they'll say, you know, I can't shut my brain off, or I, I feel kind of jittery all the time. Some people will say they feel like there's almost an internal motor going on, even when they're resting, like a, like a little buzz sensation. Uh, insomnia, which basically insomnia is the main symptom of anxiety. Some people also note that they're having mood swings, maybe uh, crying for no reason, getting angry for no reason, and a lack of focus. Um, but in addition to all of these kind of internal, uh, more vague symptoms, we have some very specific physical symptoms, such as headache, heartburn, uh, palpitations, and chest pressure, even chest pain. These can all be actually signs of anxiety. What lifestyle choices can we make to put ourselves in the best position to prevent the onset of anxiety? And when is it time to seek medical attention? So if you're having any of these symptoms and you feel like it's affecting your life for any period of time, I would say greater than two weeks, you really need to seek care so that we can tease out which issues are truly something that need a workup and which issues maybe really need a conversation about mental health and self-care. You really want to try and decrease your consumption of information and bright light, especially close to bedtime. So we want to give our brains time to adjust from the go, go, go mode of the day and switch to that um, recharging and uh, resting mode of the evening. If you don't protect your sleep, you're, you're going to be in trouble. You've got to be getting eight hours a, a night. If you think you can get by on six or seven, you can't. Please try and get eight. And if you're only in bed for less than that, that's not going to work. The other thing you want to do, which also helps sleep, is you want to move. You want to move a little bit pretty much every day. We want to get at least 30 minutes, five to six days a week. You want to hydrate. You want to reestablish those relationships that maybe have become virtual uh, since the pandemic started. And you want to reestablish the routine you had before COVID. If stress and anxiety is affecting your daily life, it's time to take action. Start your self-care journey with a doctor in your corner. Visit kp.org slash San Diego.